Hey there guys, today I'm going to be doing another knife review video, this time of the Kershaw 7000 Breakout. Now, uh, this was kind of a, a surprise, spur of the moment, impulse buy for me. Uh, I was watching Nut and Fancy's, uh, the Nut and Fancy project, I was watching his uh, 2011 SHOT Show booth review of Kershaw and all their new products. Uh, great vid, not only informative, uh, but very entertaining and hilarious. Love that vid. Uh, he was talking with one of their representatives, Jen, and they went over some of the 2010 releases, because I guess Nothing Fancy didn't have time to visit with Kershaw last year. And this knife was pointed out, if you go to that video at about the 16 minute mark, uh, you'll see him talk about this. Nut, Nut and Fancy really kind of went gaga over this knife. And the more they talked about it and the more they played with it, the more interested I became in it. And I, I went ahead and started doing a little bit of research. And uh, uh, really you know, found, found it to be a pretty interesting knife and, and picked it up. Uh, one of the things that put me over the top in terms of ordering it, here's the, here's the box that came in, uh, one of the things that really put me over the top in terms of ordering it was I found a vendor. There aren't too many out there that have them in multiple colors. I only found one, actually. Uh, most most vendors seem to have this in black, but I did have, find one vendor that had uh, variations in many different colors, and red being one of them. Uh, love a red knife, as I've said before. Uh, you've seen my review on the Benchmade 960. One of the reasons I bought that is because it has red handles. But... Uh, uh, it, it does look nice and red. It's got, uh, these are CNC machined aluminum handles, and you can see what some people call a broken glass uh, pattern. It kind of looks like a spiderweb pattern to me. I, kinda, I, I call this my Spider-Man knife because uh, that looks a lot like uh, the comic book character Spider-Man, his uniform. Uh, it's it's kind of pretty funny there. But uh, this is an auto knife. Now uh, let me go ahead and and deploy the blade. Now, in the in the booth review that Nothing Fancy did, Jen kind of made a big deal, and, and Nothing Fancy did too about how strong this deploys, how fast it deploys, and about you know they tell the story about how a guy came up to the booth review and grabbed it and opened it and j jumped out of his hand and cut his leg or something. It's not that bad. It's not that hard to hold on to, really. Um, that is a three and a half inch blade made of a, a Sandvik steel called 14C28N which is exclusive to Kai USA, uh, exclusive to Kershaw. Uh, don't know a lot about it because it is a proprietary steel. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of information about it out there. Uh, my initial impressions are that uh, uh, it sharpens up very, very well, better than uh, any steel that I've used. Uh, I put this on, uh, I took a few swipes with this on my Spyderco Sharp Maker because out of the box it was not all that sharp. So I did try to improve the edge on my Sharp Maker and wow, I got this thing razor hair popping sharp uh, with very little effort. Uh, it is now probably the sharpest knife that I own. So it, uh, I can, I can attest to the, uh, uh, you know how how sharp you can you can make that edge on this steel. Um, <clears throat> looks like a full fat, full flat ground blade. Uh, this this knife is extremely light. Uh, it's a very thin blade, thin handles. Uh, it only weighs two point six ounces. I mean, this is an everyday carry dream. Um, you know, I'm not going to comment too much about the legality of uh, auto knives, switchblades like this. Uh, I want to do where I live. The laws are a little bit unclear and ambiguous, so I'm going to check with some of the cops that are down at the range. Uh, but I am pr I am almost certain that you know I can I'm allowed to carry this this knife even though it's in an auto in my area but uh, wow it's just an easy dream it, it really irritates me that the knife laws across the country are are what they are that you know you can't just be confident about carrying this anywhere you go 
because uh, uh, this is such a nice knife to, to everyday carry. It does have a nice pocket clip. Um, you're stuck in the tip down, or excuse me, tip up uh, carry mode. Let me go ahead and fold the knife in here, and you can see that it is tip up carry, but you can reverse that. So you can, uh, it's kind of like an ambidextrous uh, pocket clip. Beautiful knife, L love those red handles. Um, the blade shape is very pleasing to me. Um, it has a lock. When you, when you fold it, there's a lock on the back that if you snap that up, now when you press the button, now it will not deploy. Uh, put it in the down position and it does deploy. When you deploy it, you can put it back up in the up position to lock the blade in the open position. Now when you, you press the button, you cannot, uh, you cannot bring the knife back down. So I really like it a lot. Very nice knife. And again, I'm really impressed with how sharp I was able to, to, to get that edge. That was really nice. You know, by the same token, I really don't understand why people need auto knives. You know, this is my first, and I, I like it. I think it's nifty, but it's not like I can't deploy, you know, my Benchmade Griptilian just as quickly, particularly if I uh, just use the axis lock and flip it open. That's easier to do when I'm not looking through a viewfinder. Um, but the, the legality hassle of, you know, of an auto knife to me really isn't worth whatever convenience it brings when you compare to some great knives like you know Benchmades for example that deploy just lightning fast with a thumb stud uh, and the axis lock. So that's kind of the only bummer, you know, is the legality issue with, with these auto knives. But otherwise, I like it a lot. Um, trying to think if there's anything I missed. I, I really don't think so. That's, that's a good overview of the knife. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to carry this, this knife. Again, I'm going to, you know, check with my local law enforcement on, on what the rules are in my, in my area, my state. Um, Price-wise, this is such a value. You know, I, I didn't have a Kershaw knife in my collection. Uh, kind of wanted to get an example of of one of their knives, and this kind of gave me the opportunity. I, I really wasn't looking to pick up an auto knife, but uh, uh, I did. And, and the price is, is is difficult to walk away from. You can find these for about seventy dollars uh, online, and you know, just can't. Can't really complain about the value. The pro, you know the you know this is a three and a half inch blade. I really like the blade length. Um, really like it. Let me go ahead and get some close up footage. Okay, so here's a closer look at this blade. This is a U.S. made knife, as you can see, which is a, a nice plus. You just don't really get the opportunity to buy U.S. made products anymore. I like to when I can. You can see these uh, standoffs between the handles here are blackened, as is the pocket clip. I imagine that's going to get scratched up pretty, pretty heavily, but not a big deal. The pivot's black. It's got several black accents on it goes nice, it's nice with this particular color. So there's a little closer look. So there you have it. That's the, the Kershaw 7000 Breakout Auto Knife. My first auto knife. Uh, outstanding knife, really. Great value and a great EDC choice if there are no legality issues uh, you know where you live. Um, I, this is a knife that I'd love to carry every day but you know again by the same token because of the legal hassles 
I don't really see that the auto function offers that much of a tactical or practical benefit over some other manual options that are out there. So, uh, you know, my opinion might change over over the next uh, few days and weeks, and maybe I'll I'll update the video. Take care. God bless. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel.